खिड़कियाँ खोल दी हमने लेकिन बहुत देर की हमें तो यही पता था कि बाहर भी अंधेरा है फ्रेंड्स टुडे आर बी टॉकिंग अबाउट ग्लोबलाइजेशन एंड द फ्लैट वर्ल्ड इकॉनमी ग्लोबलाइजेशन प्रोसेस वॉज स्टार्टेड बाई मैनी कंट्रीज वेन वी वर एट द थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी डब्ल्यू टी ओ वॉज एस्टाब्लिश इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी फाइव इकनॉमिक रिफॉर्म्स प्रोसेस स्टार्टेड इन इंडिया इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी वन एंड इंडिया ऑल्सो बिकेम द फाउंडर मेम्बर ऑफ वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी फाइव एंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ ओपनिंग अप ऑफ द इकनॉमी देर वॉज ए पैराडाइम शिफ्ट इन द इंडियन इकॉनमी इनफैक्ट द प्रोसेस ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन मीन्स इंटीग्रेटिंग द डोमेस्टिक इकॉनमी विद द रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड विद द अदर कंट्रीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड and this process began in many countries simultaneously at the when we were at the threshold of the 21st century now what exactly the flat world is that when the globalization process started the economies started getting changed there were reforms there were opening up there was paradigm shift and the market centric economy was taking place earlier most of the economies were at state centric economies and they started tilting towards market centric economies and when the economies become market centric then what happens the capitalistic tendencies start getting up getting in and this happened in many countries and the result was that western economies they started losing their sheen and the eastern economies like brics brazil russia india china and south africa the economic power started shifting towards brics countries and the brics countries so the flat world economy is the new economy the flat world economy is the economy in which information and knowledge has become important the flat world economy is the economy in which communication has become important innovation has become important and most of which is very important that it is an economy in which service led growth has become important earlier we used to talk about agricultural led growth or industry led growth or export led growth but now we talk in terms of service led growth the contribution of service sector in indian gdp it has come up to the level of 60% whereas rest 40% lies with the manufacturing sector and agriculture sector industrial sector so the flat world economy is jumping in it is getting in and indian economy is not uh, exception to this we started economic reforms in 1991 then we became member of wto we joined the bandwagon of uh, globalization that is wto in 1995 and there were lot of reforms in the industrial sector in the external sector in the export import policy in the industrial policy in financial sector banking sector and inclusive banking started in the country and the fiscal sector also fiscal reforms and then commercial reforms we amended our uh, act the mrtp act was replaced by the competition act the Com- company act new company act also came up and lot of changes were seen in the indian economy and which is known as rao and mohan singh model earlier we were working at the nehru maranobis model in the economy but we started realizing in 1991 that the model is not working model has stopped working and that is why we switched over to a new model of indian economic management and that is known as the rao ban mohan singh model and the basic difference was shifting of state centric economy towards market centric economy professor mathur as you started your discussion with globalization so how can we define globalization for a common man right ma'am uh, in fact as i already said that globalization is integrating domestic economy with the rest of the world naren murthy has given a very simple definition a very good definition of globalization that sourcing the capital where from it is cheapest selling the goods where the markets are and producing your goods where labor is cheaper or ease of doing business is there or raw material is cheaper that is globalization
Okay, so uh, what is flat world economy and what were the symptoms of flat world economy? In fact, flat world economy is when the changes started taking place from state centric to market centric, they were called the flat world economy. Ma'am Narayan Murthy has given a very simple definition of globalization in his book, A Better India, A Better World. He says, sourcing the capital where from it is cheapest, selling the goods where the markets are and producing the goods where labor is cheaper or ease of doing business is there or raw material is cheaper. So, this is a very simple definition of globalization. Now, regarding the symptoms, there are 10 important flatteners which have made this world flat and Thomas L. Friedman has recently, he has come out with or he has authored a book, so the world is flat and he says the first flattener is or symptom is new is creativity. The walls are falling and the windows are up. The Berlin Wall fell, but the window 7, window 8, people are looking word through the windows of Microsoft. The new age connectivity is the second important flattener that the, the, the distance is over now. That of distance is there now. You just push the button of your prepaid telephone and you can talk to any person on the globe. Where is the distance now? The third important flattener is workflow software that men can talk to machine, machine can talk to man and machine can talk to other machine. You insert ATM card and you and machine start talking. So, this is possible through workflow softwares. You make a railway reservation that seat cannot be booked which you have booked. It means one machine has talked to other machine. So, workflow softwares is the another important symptom. Then outsourcing is another important symptom that jobs are, man is not going to job. Jobs are coming from America to China, America to India and BPR jobs, BPO jobs, KPO jobs are there. Then insourcing that work is taking in for cost control and reducing the cost. Then offshoring, you can produce your goods outside your territorial boundary. Then supply chain man management, that is logistics. And then the, the search engines are there now. At our time, there were no search engines, but now Google is there. And anything can be searched now. People can download any damn thing. And even downloading is not possible. Next symptom is uploading. You can upload any damn thing. So, people want to connect, people want to give information, people want to take information, people want to interpret information in their way. That is the important change. And the last important symptom is the digital steroids. The iPhones, the iPads, these are all steroids, steroids of the day. We have become addicted out of that. We are so uh, excited to be on the Facebook and to connect on the Facebook with the others that we are being disconnected with the knowns in order to be connected with the unknowns. And these are the symptoms of the flat world economy. Okay, very correct, Professor Mathur. So, uh, how can we connect Indian economy with globalization and flat world economy? In fact, uh, if you see in 1991, we, we started the process of economic reforms and we shifted our model of economic management from Nehru Mahanobis model to Rao Manmohan Singh model and the basic shift was from a state centric model to market centric model that market started working. Every decision was taken by the market after that and 91 to 2000 there was first there were first generation economic reforms and from 2001 to uh, 2010 there were second generation economic reforms and the basic difference between the two was that first generation economic reforms were crisis generated but the second generation economic reforms they were consensus generated and there was consensus over the parties, over the people for reforms. Even the change of the government did not disturb the reforms. That process continued. And then Indian economy, we joined the bandwagon of WTO also in 1995. So, the process of globalization and process of economic reforms, they were very successfully progressing in India from the last 25 years. Uh, Professor Martha, you just talked about economic reforms. So, if economic reforms fails, then where we can find the solutions? Very good question, ma'am. That if this capitalist system fails or the market centric economy fails, where to go? Where will find the solution? I think uh, the solution lies in better control, solution lies in regul regul regulation. There are regulating agencies for everything. Aviation sector is regulated, education sector is regulated, insurance sector is regulated. So, regulating agencies, they should not only use wisdom, they should not only use their wisdom tooth, but they should use the biting teeth also. 
the regulation should be so strict that if the market is not at its place then they should tell the market where is your place and they should control the market in such a way that a lesson can be taken and if episodes like satyam or any other scam does not happen strict regulation and control is required. So, uh, can you tell us that how globalization can be good? In fact, Joseph Stiglitz who is a Nobel laureate he has written a book making globalization work. When the globalization process came it was promised that the total world trade will increase and it has actually happened also the world trade has gone up after globalization. But some countries are gainers and some countries are losers. Now, how this globalization will work? When the gainer countries share their gain with the loser countries, then only globalization will work otherwise it will vanish. So, to make the globalization work to make it better the gainer countries must think about the loser countries also. So, Professor Mathur, can you just highlight us about what is the difference between market centric and state centric economy? Market centric economy is one in which decisions are taken by the price mechanism, it automatically works, and there is an invisible hand which works. Whereas, the state centric economy is one in which the responsibility of development lies with the state. Now, in fact, the debate started with Columbia University. In Columbia University, there are professors like Jagdish Bhagwati, he has written a book in defense of globalization. Whereas, there are professors like Joseph Stiglitz, who has written a book making globalization work or discontents of globalization. And thirdly, there is an economist like Amartya Sen, yes. who is also a Nobel laureate, and he says that education sector, health sector they should be with the state, the sanitation sector. So, whether you free economy you downsize, downsize or upsize, but right sizing is required in education, sanitation and health. So, this is the debate among these economists. Now, on the one hand we take Kerala model of development, this is state centric model of development. Most of the development in Kerala, it is state centric. The state came forward for the development process and it was successful also. Whereas, you take the Gujarat model of development. Now, Gujarat model of development is market centric model of development. But when Modi ji became the prime minister, he brought Arvind Pangari as vice chairman of the Niti Aayog and he made it clear I am with, with which economist. He was with Jagdish Bhagati because Arvind Pangaria, sir. Uh, he was uh, he is on the chair of the Jag Jag Jagdish Bhagwati chair at Columbia University. So, it means the government is in favor of market centric economy and most of the actions which are being taken most of the policies which are being made they are all towards they are tilting towards market centric economy. So, the basic difference is who is responsible for development whether a state or market and the market is taking preference over the state these days. So, uh, Professor Mathur, what are the views of uh, Joseph Stiglitz, Jagdish Bhagwat and Amartya Sen on Indian economy? Yeah, uh, Amartya Sen has written the book India's Economic Development and he says that uh, state centric model can also work better, but if you are doing a market centric model then he wants that market centric model will not autom automatically take care of growth. If you are growing growth is necessary, but poverty cannot be taken care by the growth. So, for poverty eradication, poverty elimination and for taking care of these people who are downtrodden, a special efforts will have to be made by the state. So, some role of state is necessary this is what Amar Sen says, whereas Jagdish Bhagwati says that growth is necessary and growth will automatically trickle down and it will automatically take care of poverty eradication. Because when the trickle down effect will be there the growth will come down to the level of people and when it will come down to the level of people it will automatically eradicate poverty. 
So the, 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 the difference between Amartya Sen views and Jagdish Bhagavati's views is that Amartya Sen says automatically poverty eradication will not take place, a state will have to come forward. Whereas Bhagavati says that it will automatically come through the trickle down effect. Whereas Stiglitz says that there are discontents of globalization. And whatever discontents globalization has created, these discontents should be taken care of. And that can only be taken care of when the gainer countries of the globalization they take care of the lower countries. So, Professor Mathur, as we know that in the year 1991, globalization happened. So, what is the paradigm shift in Indian economy after 1991? Lot of paradigm shift was there. The economy was closed earlier. Now, it is an economy which is open economy. Then there was and for everything to be produced, there was license required. Now it is de-licensing. No license is required to produce now. So de-licensing was an important, uh, uh, important step we took. Then no foreign direct investment was allowed. 40 percent equity was allowed earlier. Now it is. It can go up to 100 percent in certain areas. So foreign equity participation has gone up, and the foreign companies and multinationals can become owner of Indian companies now. This is paradigm shift. Then earlier there were deficits. Now we have control deficit to the level of 3.4, 3.5. So the, the, the deficit oriented economy has changed now. Then the rate of interest was very high earlier. It was 17, 18 percent. But now the home loans rates, etc., they have come down. So interest rates structure has come down. That is another paradigm shift. Then we have changed the definition of Swadeshi. Until our imports, exports pay for the imports, we have no problem. So the definition of Swadeshi has changed that we have come to a model where exports should pay for the imports. So, exports are allowed, imports are allowed. Earlier, we were not allowing imports. Just for a printer, we used to take many permissions. Now, imports are free and we are paying through exports from them. So, these, these are the areas where paradigm shift fiscal. In fiscal sector, there is a paradigm shift. Earlier, tax rates were very high. Now, we have liberalized the tax rates. Still sector, also many changes have taken place as I talked about de-licensing even the simplification process, the privatization process earlier there was investment in public sector, now there is disinvestment in public sector and we are withdrawing money from the public sector and that money is being used for uh, the other purposes or reducing deficits in the Indian economy. So, this is the paradigm shift. So, Professor Mathur, what is the difference between Nehru Mahalonis model and Rao Manmohan Singh model of economic development of India? Ma'am, when country became independent, we had many options with us. We could have gone for socialistic economy, we could have gone for capitalistic economy, but Nehru thought of a mixed economy in which more responsibility was given to public sector. And Mahalonis was the strategian and he did the second five year plan exercise for this country in which he decided that we will invest in machines which creates machines. So, we will invest in mother machines so that a machine will create other machine. A mother machine is one which will create other machine. So, Nehru Malanovic's model was making public sector stronger. Okay. At that phase probably that was required also. Yes. So, we invested in steel plants, Bilai steel plant, Durgapur steel plant, Bukaro steel plant. Then we invested in Nusan shipyard. We invested in number of public sector enterprises and created our industrial base strong, which was very required at that phase of development because the country became independent just in 1947. But then later on, after 40 years, we started realizing that Nehru Mahalanobis model has stopped working. And the economy at the verge of collapse in 1991. There was wide gap between promises and the performance of the public sector. Most of the public sector, they were running in red. So, we realized that model of economic management must change. So, we switched over to another model of economic management when Rao became the prime minister and the Manmohan Singh Ji became the finance minister. Then a new model cropped up and that was new model of economic management which is known as the, the market centric model of economic, economic management. And this model is about freeing the economy from the clutches. This model is about privatization, liberalization and globalization. Liberalization means 
freeing the economy from the clutches. Privatization means change in the ownership from public sector to private sector and globalization means integrating Indian economy from domestic sector to rest of the world. Indeed, you have thrown a very good light on Indian economy, globalization as well as on the flat world economy. So, I would like to conclude by saying that Indian economy has chosen the right path, but the path which we know which is right path, knowing the path and walking the path are different. We should walk the right path and what is the right path that if the market centric economy fails, if the market is distorted, if market is not functioning, if market is exploiting, if market is charging exorbitant prices, then regulatory agencies should not stop doing their business. They should strictly come up. They cannot be a silent spectator. The regulating studies, uh, regulating bodies, they should not only use their wisdom tooth, but they should use their biting teeth also, so that if the market is not at its place, they can show the market what is your right place. Thank you.